Hi, I'm Lindsay Lockett, the founder of Holistic Trauma Healing, the host of the Holistic Trauma Healing podcast, and I am a nervous system educator and coach who specializes in complex PTSD. And recently, I've decided that I want to get out onto some different platforms other than Instagram. And so I think the etiquette of the internet dictates that I must tell you about myself. So here's who I am. Here's my story. And here's why it's so important to nourish your nervous system. So rather than telling you my entire life story, which could take up hours of time. And I've also shared a lot of my life story on episode one of the Holistic Trauma Healing Podcast. I'll just say that I had a pretty crazy childhood. My home life was dysfunctional, even though I know now that my parents were doing the best they could. And when you combine divorce, alcoholism, fundamentalist Christianity, financial scarcity, uh, physical and verbal abuse, and a rural horse ranch <laughs> on the windy prairie of West Texas, you get my home and family of origin. I don't like participating in the weird cultural ritual of telling you all the bad things that happened to me so that I can seem heroic or strong or so that I can prove that I'm credible enough to do this work. I went through some shit. Simple as that. I went through some shit. The environment in which I was raised, be that in the home environment or in the fundamentalist Christian upbringing that I had in the Southern Baptist Church, both of those were the recipe uh, with all the necessary ingredients to form complex PTSD and long-term chronic nervous system dysregulation, lots of adaptive survival patterns that as an adult didn't serve me very well in life or in relationships and really kept me from living my life to the fullest and knowing what it's like to be embodied in my authenticity. I don't want to let all the struggles that I went through define me. I didn't let them define me. I won't let them define me now. Whether I was physically abused or not, which I was, doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter that I have religious trauma. It doesn't matter that I was raised and brainwashed to be afraid of trusting my body, to believe that my desires were sinful. Um, it, it, none of that matters as much as what I've done with it. I tell my clients and students all the time, I don't actually care what happened to you. I care how is your nervous system responding and reacting to that. So let's just say that the physical abuse I endured, the emotional abandonment I endured, the religious brainwashing and indoctrination, the divorce of my parents before I was two years old, bullying at school, always needing to people please and try to fit in, being emotionally abandoned by my mother, all of these things were like the perfect ingredients to go into the pot to create complex PTSD, which is really just a label for the type of nervous system dysregulation I experience. And through my own holistic trauma healing work, which I continue to do, I was able to take radical responsibility for myself and reclaim my self-trust, my sovereignty, and my authenticity. I had a lot of intellectual knowing. I'm a researcher by nature. I have a sharp, smart, often overthinking mind. And the work that I do today has bridged the long distance between my mind and my body for me. I now deeply understand that the nervous system is the bridge between the spiritual and the physical worlds. I had a lot of intellectual knowing about, you know, I could talk about my trauma. I had done talk therapy. I could tell you all the bad things that happened to me. I could even tell you some of the ways that I was trying to survive through the world. But until I understood the nervous system and the importance of nourishing a malnourished nervous system, I was really stuck. I was stuck in my relationships. I was stuck in life. I was stuck in patterns of parenting that I'm not super proud of. I was stuck in religious indoctrination and all the shame and fear that accompanies that. I was just stuck. And over the past five years, I have taken that intellectual knowledge and I have, through spiritual practice, through nervous system dysregulation, through sitting with myself in awareness, I now have embodied understanding. And I no longer need to prove with my mind what I know in my body. On March 7th, 2019, I actually attempted suicide. 
And this came about as a result of about a year prior of going through the most intense anxiety and insomnia I've ever experienced. That year of not sleeping, particularly the last five months of not sleeping before I tried to take my own life, was my dark night of the soul. I can remember the sleepless nights where I would go to sleep at about 10.30 p.m. and around 1 a.m. before I even had a chance to be awake, my body was in a panic. It was like the adrenaline was waking me up out of sleep and then wouldn't let me go back to sleep. I was so physically uncomfortable. The sensations of anxiety in my body were unbearable. It felt like torture. I was physically exhausted from five months of only getting two and a half hours of sleep max per night. And on top of all of that, I had extreme health anxiety because I was having some mystery pelvic issues that I didn't know how to figure out. And I didn't have health insurance, so I didn't know how I was going to pay to figure it out or fix it if I could. Turns out I did figure out what it was. I had a condition known as pelvic congestion syndrome, which is essentially varicose veins around the pelvic organs. So in June of 2019, just three months after my suicide attempt, I actually traveled to London and I got a full pelvic vein embolization and I've been free from pelvic congestion syndrome symptoms ever since. I also needed a lot of pelvic floor physical therapy because I had a very hypertonic pelvic floor. And I now understand that the reason I had this hypertonic pelvic floor was from a lifetime of clenching, of bracing for the next bad thing to happen, the next trauma to happen, the next abandonment to happen, the next abuse to happen. And after I attempted suicide on March 7, 2019, I checked myself into the psych hospital I was put on a cocktail of three different psychiatric medications, which I gladly accepted at that point. And I got out and began the work of figuring out what it was that got me to that point. And that required me to follow many different threads. I had to follow the religious trauma thread, and I had to deconstruct and deconvert from that religion and from that programming that was subconsciously running the show in the background. I was filtering so many things about myself and about other people through that dogmatic religious filter, such as the beliefs about my body, that I couldn't trust my intuition because the Bible says that the heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it? Uh, I didn't trust my body itself in terms of allowing myself to be seen because of all the indoctrination about modesty and it, it being my fault if a boy or a man were to lust after me. I had all this fear about death because I didn't know if me praying and accepting Jesus into my heart was actually enough to do to get me into heaven. And so I recommitted my life to Jesus a lot. I was baptized three different times just to be sure that I was going to get into heaven. And then at home, I was enduring physical and emotional and verbal abuse from my stepfather, who my mom married whenever I was seven. Um, he was physically abusive. He would hit us with a belt or whatever else was handy. He verbally abused us. He would call me names. He would make comments about my body that were very inappropriate and just wasn't a safe parental figure to be around. And my mother, uh, although she wasn't as physically abusive, my mother was emotionally abandoning me. So what I mean by that is that my mother would give me the silent treatment a lot and she would be passive aggressive. And I can remember coming home from school and, you know, every child, when they get home from school, they want to be greeted by a parent who holds their arms out and says, oh, you're home. Welcome home. I'm so glad you're back. I missed you. Tell me everything you did today. Tell me how was your day? How, what did you do with your friends? What did you play at recess? Did you make some art? How was your lunch? Like that's what every child wants and needs to be greeted with. But very often what I got greeted with was her back turned to me and an energy where she was just kind of flat and withdrawn. And I could feel in my little body that something was wrong because I've always been very energetically sensitive. But whenever I would ask her, like, hey, mom, is everything okay? I would just get, it's fine. And that created so much dissonance because 
here was this parental figure, this mom who I trusted and I loved, and I'm supposed to believe what she says. So if she tells me everything is okay, I'm supposed to be able to trust that. But yet the message in my body was like, but it's not okay. And I can feel that it's not okay. And so my fight flight response would activate in pursuit of my mother. So I would lean in even more. Are you sure everything's okay? Yep, it's fine. Did I do something wrong? No. Is there anything I can do to make you feel better? No. Ooh, just talking about that brings up that sensation on a, a low level. Um, and so then whenever I couldn't reestablish connection by pursuing and initiating communication with her, then I would start randomly going about the house, trying to do something that would get her to notice and reconnect with me, whether that was rearranging the decorations on the mantel or pulling out my straight A report card or going and cleaning up my room, just something to try to be extra helpful because then maybe she would snap out of whatever she was in, whatever trance she was in and reconnect with me. So I learned from a very young age to be hypervigilant about people's verbal and nonverbal communication cues. And that has stuck with me to this day. Um, I am very sensitive to body language, tone of voice, inflection, facial expressions, size. And sometimes when it's really bad, I'm even hypervigilant about the verb tense. <laughs> that people use. Um, and all of this is in an effort to be so sensitive to the environment that I can try to predict and avoid being abandoned. So all of this came up after my suicide attempt, uh, after I got out of the hospital, all of this came up to the surface and it was like, whoa, I've got some stuff. <laughs> There's some stuff here that I have never faced that has all been stored in my body. And it was like, my soul was like, okay, if you're not, if she's not awake by the age of 35, here's what's going to happen. And the dark night of the soul is what happened. And it was a spiritual awakening for me. And it was an awakening to my nervous system. It was awakening to trauma. It was an awakening to how my body had been trying to communicate with me for my whole life through uncomfortable sensations. And I had gotten very adept at learning to check out or obsessive house cleaning to try to make myself feel better, being controlling in my marriage and with my kids, just being in all of these perpetual trauma responses all the time. So during the healing journey that followed, the suicide attempt and checking myself out of the hospital, I realized how unprocessed trauma had affected literally my whole being and that in order to heal, I had to do that in a way that supported and nourished me wholly, holistically. So although I benefited from EMDR therapy and the psychiatric drugs that I was prescribed, those modalities never totally resonated with me because they forced me to like fragment myself rather than heal as a whole person. And it took a lot of self-experimentation, intuition, and I was eventually able to start forging my own path to nourish and integrate the physical, spiritual, mental, relational, ancestral, and emotional parts of my being. And along the way, I discovered the wonderful, wonderful world of the nervous system. Ever since then, I worked with thousands of people through private coaching, group coaching, and I also give one-of-a-kind workshop experiences. My followers and community on Instagram call them the Lindsay Lockett workshop experience. And yeah, I never intended to really make this my career or my path, but it became very evident to me through my own self-healing journey that this is really what I was put on the planet to do. I can remember very, very vividly on a psychedelic journey in the summer of 2020 um, where the universe told me that my purpose on this earth was to heal my own trauma and then help others do the same. And so that's what I've been doing ever since. I currently live on the North Shore of Lake Superior with my husband, David. We've been married almost 23 years. We have two adult children and we have two dogs named Willow and Lachlan. 
And I, in my free time, when I'm not with clients, when I'm not creating courses and programs and workshops, I enjoy cold plunges in Lake Superior. I'm also an avid snorkeler. My husband and I usually go to the Caribbean twice a year, and I love to snorkel. I also love to forage for plants and make my own plant medicines and flower essences. I enjoy sensual movement. I am into pole dancing, and I love having weekly family dinners with my local in-person community. So where I would like to start with this first video, this is going to be the first of 12 videos that talk about nourishing the nervous system. And by the way, I have a book. It's an ebook and an audio book called Nourish Your Nervous System, a holistic guide for sustainable nervous system regulation and healing. You can find that on my website at lindsayloggett.com slash nourish, or you can check out the links below this video. Um, But I'm going to be talking my way through the book, through nourishing your nervous system. So we're going to talk about nourishing your nervous system holistically, meaning physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, ancestrally, and relationally. And what the universe has given me uh, throughout this work, starting with that psychedelic journey I mentioned a couple minutes ago, is the spider's web. So on that day during my mushroom journey, the spider's web showed up in multiple different ways. Um, And it's been really really meaningful to me ever since. Um, And so I just want to tell you about one of my stories uh, about a spider's web and how it relates to my work. So this happened about a year after that, that psychedelic journey. I was on my daily walk through the woods and our bearded collie Lachlan was with me. I turned a corner on the path and I stopped instantly in my tracks and I was just breathless over what I saw because hanging in between two balsam trees, two big balsam trees that were on either side of the path, hanging in between them was the tiniest spider's web I've ever seen. I mean, this thing could not have been more than three or four inches across max. If the sun had not been backlighting it through the trees, I would have totally not seen it and I would have plowed through it. Before I got there, the spider had already anchored her web from these two balsam trees and they were about five feet apart for such a tiny web. So these long anchor threads stretched from the balsam trees And then she was spinning the web in the middle. It made it look as if the web was suspended in midair. It was so cool. She had spun the primary and secondary radials and frames, and she was working on the spiral in the middle. So it was a very traditional looking spider's web. She was tightly weaving the center of the web. And this is the part of the web that's known as the hub. And suddenly, oh, suddenly my dog's bloofy tail lightly touched one of the anchor points that was coming from the trees. And I gasped because I thought his tail was going to just take down this whole web. And what I, I witnessed after that was such a lesson for me. As soon as the dog's tail lightly touched her web, the spider dropped straight down. I mean, in a split second, and she hung there. And then just as quickly, she climbed back up that line of floss that came out of her abdomen And she went to the center of the web that she had just started working on, and she just sat there and waited. And it couldn't have been any clearer to me if the universe had spoken to me in actual words. I realized there, that little tiny web hanging in the middle of these two trees as if it was suspended in midair, her web, every spider's web, is their only means of nourishing themselves. And before their web can nourish them by catching prey, They have to spin a place of safety in the middle because they always go back to the middle in times of danger to wait. So I realized that this is what the work is, the work, that we have to consciously weave our webs of life, right, through our actions, our words, our subconscious and conscious habits and patterns, intentional choices, unintentional choices, mistakes, through all of it, we are weaving a web that is our life. A lot of the times we're unconsciously weaving this web. We're not aware of the power of our words or of the power of our unconscious choices or the power of how trauma patterns are still living in our body and informing the choices that we're making today. 
we have to weave that safe place within ourselves, just like the center of her web, the hub of the web, so that we can find that safety within ourselves and always have a safe place within to come back to in moments of danger. And like those two anchor points, those two balsam trees, we also have anchor points in our own lives that we're weaving our webs around. So if you can imagine your life as a spider's web, you have an anchor point that's your physical body. You have another anchor point that is your mind. You have another anchor point that's your emotion. You have another anchor point that's your spirit or your soul. Another anchor point is your relationships. And another anchor point is your ancestry. And you're just weaving your web around those anchor points. And that's what's creating your life. Each aspect of the self creates the framework of who we are surrounding and including the very center of the web, which is the safe space within. Whatever happens, we must create a safe space in the center of our being so that we always have that safety within us. We can't be outsourcing that safety to other people. For most of my life, I wasn't consciously weaving this web. I wasn't aware of all these different aspects of my being. I had no awareness of my innate wholeness, of the necessity and utter privilege that I have to constantly tend to and nervous nourish my nervous system so that my body, mind, soul, emotions, relationships, and ancestry could be anchor points of safety within. And without that safety, everything, whether it's within us or outside of us, every feeling, sensation, relationship, symptom, even foods can be a threat. And my awakening helped me see how I wasn't honoring my wholeness in the way I was living, how I wasn't living consciously, how I wasn't anchored to the truth of my being, and how I didn't know how to feel safe within myself. It's no wonder my nervous system was always dysregulated trying to find safety. I was always looking for it outside of myself. I didn't know how to find it within. I was also living unconsciously, and I was making unconscious choices that were unconsciously creating a life that I didn't exactly love. And so my healing process, like everyone's healing process, involved making the unconscious conscious. And once the unconscious was conscious, if I were to continue making the same choices, living under that same programming, doing the same things, living in those same trauma responses, then I would be consciously making those choices. And who would consciously do that? Who consciously chooses anxiety? Who consciously chooses people-pleasing, fawning, yelling at their kids, right? Nobody consciously chooses that. Those are always unconscious choices. To this day, I'm still learning about myself. I still am curious about the unconscious patterns in my life. I'm definitely still on the healing journey, and I'm under no illusions that I'm ever going to be off of it. I know now that healing is not a destination out there somewhere in the future. Healing is an ever-unfolding journey. It's not a straight line. It's like a spiral. And every time we go around the spiral, we get a new perspective, a new awareness of ourselves, of a pattern, of a relationship, of a voice in our heads. And then we can go around it again and we'll gain even deeper awareness. And we're just constantly going down the spiral. It's like one of those circle slides <laughs> that we go down. I continue to embody what I teach, which is that in wholeness with awareness, the gift of free choice and the ability to regulate our nervous systems we have so much power to weave nourishing lives of continual and sustainable safety and healing. So your first point is to anchor into who you are as a whole person. All of you, you're not broken. You're not incomplete. You don't need to be fixed. Anchor into the truth that you are a whole person. And then begin to create that safety within yourself so that you always have a safe place within to return to as you build and create your beautiful web of life. So whether I'm podcasting or teaching a nervous system workshop or working with my private clients, this is what I am sharing, that in wholeness, with awareness and through nourishing our nervous systems, the impossible becomes possible, the unhealed is healed. And the pain is alchemized into joy and purpose. And as I said, throughout my journey, the spider's web has been a great teacher for me. And over the course of this Nourish Your Nervous System series, I'm going to share a couple more stories of how nature has given me the spider's web to teach me a lesson in an instant. A spider designs its web so that the tiniest vibration on one strand ripples out to the entire web and it vibrates the entire web. Every individual thread connects to every other thread through the web, and this also mirrors our lives. Everything is connected. 
we can't separate our physical bodies from our emotions, from our thoughts, from our ancestry, from our relationship. We can't separate any of it. It's like the web of neurons in our brains, right? All those threads of neurons are connected together because they each touch one another. Or the threads of our nervous system that connect our gut with our heart, with our actual brain, all the way down into our pelvic floor, all the way down into our feet. It's also not unlike the mycelial network, right, that connects everything in a forest to everything else. Even though you can't see it, you can only see the fruiting body of the mushroom above the surface. But underneath is this web of mycelium that's connecting everything together. Everything is connected. We cannot separate consciousness from the nervous system. We can't separate the health of our brains from our lifestyle choices. We can't separate ourselves into various organs and systems, right, the way that modern medicine does. You go to the gastroenterologist for stomach issues. You see the cardiologist for heart issues. You see the dermatologist for skin issues. But it's all connected, you can't separate the body into various organs and systems. And we can't separate our bodies from our emotions or our relationships. We can't fragment our wholeness. And we are living in a, a day and age where people are chronically fragmented. We're kind of pretending like our mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, relational, and ancestral health isn't directly affecting and influencing our entire lives and the ways of, of, in which we live. And this is holistic trauma healing. It invites us, I invite you to see yourself as already whole. You're not healing so that you can become whole. You are healing in wholeness as a whole person, calling back all the fragmented parts of yourself. Trauma causes a sort of malnourishment in every aspect of our existence. We can be physically malnourished, emotionally malnourished, relationally malnourished, spiritually malnourished. And if we're going to truly sustainably heal, we have to do it as a whole. We have to be looking at all of these different anchor points of our lives, not just the body, not just the nervous system, not just the spirituality, but all of it. So if the web of life that you've been weaving consciously or unconsciously is not working for you, there's no shame in that. Everybody's done that. All of us have been asleep at one time or another regarding our choices, the uncomfortable emotions we feel, or the <laughs> emotions we're afraid to feel. And you may notice an urge that, oh, I just wish I could tear it all down and start over. And although some spiders build new webs daily, many species regularly repair their existing webs. They notice where there's a weak spot or a hole and they go fix it. They set to work strengthening and repairing the damage. And the stronger the web is, the more nourished the spider can be. And we can do the same. When we bring awareness to our lives, to the web that we're weaving, we can see what needs strengthening and repairing, and we can take, take action steps toward being more nourished. And nourished here is not a destination. It's not uh, an end point that you ever reach. It's a journey and it's a process. And nourishment means way more than food. We often think about food when we think of nourishment. I'm not talking about food nourishment. I'm talking about even deeper levels than that, although we will talk about food a bit in this series. And once you taste and feel how incredible whole self-nourishment is, you're going to be hard-pressed to settle for less. No one and nothing teaches a spider how to weave her web. Her body holds that innate wisdom, the skill, and even the thread with which to instinctively survive. She has everything she needs to nourish herself inside of her body, and you do too. Your body holds all the keys to nourishment so that you will not only survive, but thrive. And I hope that what you're going to receive throughout this Nourish Your Nervous System video series or in my book, Nourish Your Nervous System, will unlock your innate wisdom and lead you to consciously weave a deeply nourishing web of life. I hope this video has given you a little bit of a taste of my work and that you can look forward to 11 more videos that are coming after this as part of the Nourish Your Nervous System series of videos. If you don't want to wait for the videos, click the link below for my book. You can get Nourish Your Nervous System as an instant download as well as an audiobook, lindsaylockett.com slash nourish. You can also find me on Instagram at I am Lindsay Lockett, and Lindsay is with an EY, not an AY. You can check out my website, lindsaylockett.com, browse around, learn more about me, and check out my offerings. And finally, you can listen to my podcast, Holistic Trauma Healing, 
anywhere that you like to listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Anchor, everywhere. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe below so that you can follow the rest of the videos that are coming in this series. And thank you so much for watching.